Aloha. First, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Thank you for what you do for your family, uh, for the Lord. What you do is important. Your children and your spouse, they depend on you. Uh, they depend on you physically, financially, but most importantly, they depend on you spiritually. God's spiritual leader to lead in the ministry of the family is the father. And we've seen that from the very beginning of time, and it's still true today. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. We had Mother's Day, and I mentioned you listen to the voice of your mother. But also today, as we recognize, it's a, it's a good holiday, if you will, uh, to recognize the fathers. So children, obey your fathers in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and that you may live long upon the earth, the Bible tells us. I want to welcome our visitors. Thank you for choosing to be here to worship our Father in heaven. Uh, you could be anywhere, but you chose to put God first, and you are an encouragement to us here at the family in Honolulu. Now, I'm continuing my series of lessons on the church, and it's still a Father's Day sermon, so, so don't worry. What do you believe about the church is the question that we've asked about the series. And it's a question not about any church or, uh, or churches out there. It's a question that is about or pertaining to the one you read about in the Bible. And it's important for us as Christians to have the right understanding about who we are as the church. It's important for us that what we believe about the church comes from the word of God. The church is God's family. The scriptures uh, describe it as, as this. For example, here in Paul's instruction to Timothy, but if I delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God. And that's not talking about a building. It's not talking about a temple. The house of God is the people of God. It's the church, the Christians. He says to Timothy that you ought to know how to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay. Uh, what did we want to do with this? Did we want to announce it? Okay. Okay, yes. Uh, so there's an emergency uh, CRV with the license plate. If you drive a Honda CRV, if you could... If you could go outside and move your car, we have a medical situation, uh, and the car is in the way. If you drive a Honda CRV, thank you very much. Uh, do we have the ambulance on the way? Okay. Okay. Let's uh let's say a prayer. Let's say a prayer together. Our Father in heaven, Lord, you know all things, and Father, you know and you understand all things, and we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to gather as your church, and, and in the midst of our gathering this morning, you know, Lord, that there is a need, and there's someone who uh, is dealing with a medical emergency. Father, we pray your blessing upon them. Uh, we pray safe travels as they make their way to the hospital. Uh, we pray for the doctors and the nurses, Lord. Uh, as you guide them, Lord, may they, they uh, recover from whatever situation they are in. 
Thank you so much, Father, for hearing all of our prayers and for answering all of our prayers. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The church is the family of God. Here's another passage that emphasizes that. Uh, Paul worded this way, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, who is the Father defined here by Paul? The comma there, from whom? So it's from the Father, or it's within the Father, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. This group of gathered people here will not be a family without the Father. There's no ex uh, existence of the church without the one whom the church is named. The name that you carry is the name of Jesus. The name that we are named is the name Christian. And so important for us to remember that, that the father is the head of this family. So in regards to this series, our focus this morning will be the father and his family. The father and his family. You and I are part of God's family when we obeyed the gospel. And the Bible is very clear on how one becomes part of God's family. Galatians 3, verse uh, 26 and 27. He says, for you are all sons in Christ Jesus, or are sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, in case... Uh, they didn't understand what faith meant, or in case we don't know what faith is, or someone doesn't understand what faith is, I've added verse 27. Because faith in God, or faith through Christ, is obedience to the word. And verse 27 shows that. How am I a child of God when I obeyed his command to hear the gospel to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, to repent of my sins, to confess He is the Son of God, and to be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of my sins. That's what faith will do. And the Bible says that here, we are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. How so? We were baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins, putting on Christ. And then the passage that was read for us is really where I, I want to launch the sermon thought off. It's 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. And 1 John tells us, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know God. Now, I want to submit to you, yes, God created man. God created man in his image and according to his likeness. And there is a sense that mankind are offsprings of God, children of God. But I want to emphasize just how special the church is. And it's shown in this, in this verse and other verses in the Bible. If you notice in this verse, there's a comparison. That there is this group that is defined here as the world. And then there is this group that is, this, that is defined here as the children of God. I want to emphasize for us this morning that not all human beings are children of God. That's how special the church is. Not all human beings are children of God. There were some believers called the Jews that didn't believe Jesus. And you know whose sons he said they were? You are children of the devil. You do the work of your father, the devil. You know, that's how special the church is. But here's my emphasis. The Bible says, behold what manner of love. What is the love of God like? 
And when we think about the manner of love, we, we not only think about the kind of love, but the degree of that kind of love. And you know, you, you and I know that God's love in, in the Greek is described in the highest form of the word agape, a sacrificial type of love, a love that looks out for the benefit of those being loved, a love that will do whatever it takes to demonstrate the care and protection and compassion that, 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 that is shown towards the one being loved. John 3, 16, for God so agapao the world, right? He looked at the world he created, man that he created, and he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe will be his children, All right? One thing about God's love is seen in the fact that he's given man free will. God has given to us the ability to choose. What would it be like if you were just wired to love God? No, you have to choose to love God. And the Bible says that the reason why we choose to love God is because he chose to love us. Not that, in, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And so here's the question. How does the father love his children? There are several ways you benefit from this lesson. Number one, if you are a father, once you listen to the words this morning, if you are a father, your greatest example and model of being a father and what a father is, is God Almighty. If you're a father this, mo this morning, learn from what type of father God is to his children. Because it will help us all, coming from me going forward. This morning, if you are someone looking for a father, and I know that Father's Day is different for everyone, some feel encouraged today, and you go back in, in memory lane, and you remember how good your father was to you, how he provided for you, how he cared for your mom, and your siblings if you have siblings. Some of us sit here today and they go down memory lane and they see a father who was mean and angry and wrathful and unloving who harmed his children or who harmed his children's mom. All right, so everyone has a has a different feeling about Father's Day. And so to that audience, if you are the latter, I want to encourage you, if you're looking for the Father, here he is. Be reminded of who God is. He is your Father. And maybe you're not part of his family. He wants you to be his child. And from this lesson, you can see the privileges and the blessings of being a child of God. Again, John says, Behold what manner of love he has bestowed upon us that we should be called his children. You ever pause and think about that you are a child of the Most High? How privileged you are and I am to be God's children. And lastly, if you are a child of God, and you and that's majority of you, this morning you will be reminded of God's love for his children. In the first, God's love for his children. In regards to the question, how does he love his children? He loves through discipline. The father's uh, uh, the father disciplines his children, and it's a way that he demonstrates his love. All right, the Bible says this in Hebrews. Go with me there. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. 
And I want us to notice that. Uh, the Hebrews writer writing to Christians who are persecuted. And these Christians that are persecuted, uh, they, they were challenged to go back to the law of Moses or to go in you know, another direction different from following Jesus. And he gives them some guidance that, that you need to look at these hardships and these trials as your father's way of making you better. As your father's way of disciplining you. All right. Notice that here. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure ch uh, chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. I would want us to think about that, what's being said there. If you are without trials, if you are without tribulations, if you are without challenges in your life, you have to ask yourself, are you a son of God? Are, are you living the way you should? Because his children go through drama. His children go through, go through trials. His children go through difficulties. It's one of the mark of a disciple of Christ. Suffering. And that's what he's saying here. If you live life without any of it, you got to ask yourself, am I living right? Am I living for my father? Am I a child of my father? But continuing the reading, he says, furthermore, we have had our human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. All right, go down memory lane and, and try to remember some of the times you got the salsa. Some of the times you, your dad, you know, uh, through discipline, right? Through teaching, through words, right? Uh, uh, salsa is a last resort. Uh, teaching through words, through example. And then if words are not working, we, we spank, all right? It's biblical to spank your children. Right, the Bible says that he who spares the rod does not love his child. Now you got to ask yourself, do you love that child? And the father in heaven does that to you and to me, his own children. He says, shall we not much more readily be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed are your father at home when you were brought up. For they indeed uh, uh, for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them. But he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful. And that's the truth. We don't enjoy it. But when we look back, I, I never enjoyed the lickings I got. I mean, if, if you enjoy that... Yeah. You need to get yourself checked. Uh, <laughs> I never enjoyed the lickings, the sussels, you know. Uh, one, one of the days uh, uh, after church, uh, when we came back from church, as soon as, my, as soon as my dad turned off the truck, I said a bad word to my older brother. Soon as he turned off the truck, the truck just barked at, uh, parked at home. He turned it off, and I, and I mouthed off to my older brother. And you know what happened that day? It was rainy. He got out of there. Bring me that kid, right, in Psalm 1 language. All right. And I remember jumping out of the back of the truck, and I booked it. I ran. And I ran down. So, so our driveway is a little bit long, so I ran down the, the dirt. And it's all rainy, and it's, it's downpouring. And I look back at my dad. He's running after me. And, and, and. You know, my dad was a, a little heavy set, but he was running after me. And, and and then I came to my senses. Man, it would be worse if dad slips running after me. That was my thought process because I looked back and I saw my dad. He was like running after me. And then I came to my senses. So I stopped. 
and I endured the chastening. Right? It's one of the worst ones I got. But I know why he did it. Right? At the time, I didn't know. I mean, at the time, I said a curse word. So my mind was like, okay, bad word. Here's the punishment. But later in life, you look back and it's like he was shaping me because he loves me. God does that to his children. Going through some challenging times, hang in there. Right? Hang in there. It's feeling like there's no light at the end of time. Hang in there. Look for the silver lining. How is God making you better through this trial? How are you benefiting from these challenges? There's always something good from the trials, right? James tells us that in James chapter 1 and verse 2. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials, knowing that the testing or the trying of your faith, it produces patience, hupamane. And let patience has his perfect work with you, that you may be perfect, lacking in nothing. God loves us. And so he will allow us to be tried. He will allow us to go through, to go through challenges and to grow through challenges. And it's up to us to view the challenge in that light. Because sometimes the challenge is like, oh, I don't know what to do. Seems like there is no hope. Hang in there. All right? God loves us so much. He does this for his children. In the, in the second place, right, the father comforts his children. Notice that with me. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the kind of father he is. The father of mercies. And the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation. So along with that trial, understand that you have not been neglected. It's often the, the thought or the conclusion we come through. When we go through challenges in life, we feel like we've been neglected. We have a perception of God and we say, why God? Where are you, God? Hang in there. He's made a promise that he will never leave you nor forsake you. But he's also this type of God who comforts. Do children need comfort? Oh, children need comfort. Dads, don't be too hard. And that's coming from me. I think I get too hard on my children. Children need comfort. And the first place they understand comfort is you as a father. The first place where children get to see what comfort is really like is through parents. Sometimes if, if, you, if you've never felt the comfort from upbringing and encouragement from your upbringing, if you've never felt that, it would be hard to understand the comfort of God. Because that's one of the experiences where he tells the world, this is the type of father I am. Through the comfort that we provide our children. And that's what God provides to us. He comforts us. He takes care of us. He knows when we're going through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, Psalmist says this about God. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Father, you are with me. Your rod and your strength, they comfort me. Or your staff, they comfort me. That's the type of father we have. He loves his church through discipline. He loves his church through comfort. Number three, the father gives good gifts to his children. Right? I love giving my children good gifts. The other night, we, we were up at night, and it was kind of warm, and it was past 9 p.m., and I and, uh, was hearing whispers about ice cream, you know? 
And and so I was sitting there, I was listening to them, like, man, some ice cream would be nice, you know. So I said, let's all go to the store and get some ice cream. And they were all sad about it. No. They were all happy. They rejoiced and and they were so excited. And and, and for some reason, when we go shopping, we don't all go shopping. Okay. <laughs> sometimes is I, I'm going by myself to do the shopping or Athena. Sometimes we'll take a few. It's been a long time since we took the entire family in the store. And man, we got some looks. <laughs> we were looking at us and they were, you know, they're probably thinking, man, that's a lot of kids. It's a lot of children. Right. And, and uh, our church family knows here we are expecting twins. Because we didn't didn't have enough children, that's why. But I love seeing my kids rejoice. I love to see them happy about things that I give to them, things that I provide. I love that they don't doubt the security of our home, that they don't question where the next meal comes from. I love that because they know Dad will provide. Dad has an answer. Dad does this. Dad does that. Right? Dad is number one. Right, kiddos? Uh, and so, and so when, when I think of God the Father and how the Bible describes him, listen to this, right? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Right? It comes down from the Father of lights. Sometimes I, I, I like to picture God, you know, uh, uh, in the living room. It's just my imagination. And, and he's saying up there in heaven, they're going to love this. All right. And he's about to, to share a blessing. My child is going to love this. My children are going to enjoy this. All right. Church, you are so blessed. Have you paused and considered everything good about your life? Often our minds dwell on what? The bad things, the negative things, the things that the devil would want us to dwell upon. But our God gives everything good. Fresh air is a good gift. A house to live in is a good gift. Food on a table is a good gift. Every necessity of life is a good gift. You live in Hawaii. What a great gifts of nature we experience. God gives good gifts. That's the kind of father we have. And I'm reminded of what Jesus uh, 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 talked about in the Sermon on a Mountain. And here's what he says. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. And he who seeks, finds. And to whom who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If you being evil, and he's talking about, you know, the, the, the us humans. If, if, if a sinner knows how to give good gifts to his own offspring, that's the comparison. Look at God. He says this. Uh, uh, he continues, or if he asks a fish, he will give him a serpent. If then, being evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Sometimes you don't get it because you're not asking. Sometimes you don't get it because you ask for the wrong reasons. God is willing to give. God is willing to provide everything good for his family. 
Last but not least, our Father is merciful towards his children, but not just his children, towards all. He is merciful towards all. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 through 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That's how special the church is to the Father. He chose her. He chose you. You are his special people. With the purpose that we are, are doing this morning, fulfilling this morning, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Listen to this. Who once was not the people of God, but are now the people of God. All of us are Gentiles. I don't think there's a single true Jew in this building. All of us are Gentiles. Paul in another place said we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Israel was the people of God in the Old Testament, but not anymore. God's people in the New Testament is every Christian. Everyone who has obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how merciful he is. He had a way for you. A way for me to be his children, who once were not the children of God, but now a child of God, or now the children of God, who once had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Because the one over the household is a merciful one. God showed his mercy to us all, in that he demonstrated his own love, that while we were yet sinners, deserving of wrath, yet we obtained mercy. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God's love for us, church, can be seen through how he disciplines his children. Ever go through a challenging time in your life, I want you to hang in there. I want you to try to see the silver lining. How is my father in heaven making me better as his child through this trial? Right? See it that way. His love is seen in how he comforts his children. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes there's heartache. There's grief. And he's the father of all comforts. His love is seen through what, how he provides for his children. He gives us every good gift. And last but not least, his love for his family is seen through his mercy towards his children and towards all men. Are you in the family of God this morning? The Bible says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, after Peter preached the gospel, here's what it says, then those who heard, right, who gladly received his word were baptized, and that, three, three, and that day 3,000 souls were added to them. Verse 47 said, praising God, the father of the family, praising God and having favor with all men, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. If you're not a family of God, you can be added by the Father himself if you will hear the gospel of Christ. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. If you will believe he is the son of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you will repent of all your sins, to give up sin, right, and to turn to God. Jesus said, except you repent, you will likewise perish to confess Jesus is the Son of God. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. To be baptized after you confess Jesus is the Son of God for the forgiveness of your sins. Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you be faithful in his household, having the type of father that he is on your side until eternity. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of righteousness, Jesus says. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. If you need encouragement in prayers, let us know how we can pray for you and with you. If you need to be baptized to be a child of God today, here's your opportunity. We're going to stand and sing. I invite you to come as we stand and sing.